Has Cad Swain been cast in the Amazon adaptation of The Wheel of Time? Maybe, but not really officially. But in light of the recent excitement over the possibility of Shora Agadashlu playing Cad Swain in the show, I thought it might be time to dust off the character examination series and take a deeper look at Cad Swain Melidrin. So join me today as we dive deep into a character that has many divided as to whether they like her or not. We'll also answer the question, is Cad Swain a better advisor than Moraine? This video is going to carry a spoiler rating of red with major spoilers all the way through the final book of the series, A Memory of Light. If you don't want spoiled, watch this video at your own risk. Cad Swain Melidrin was born in the city of Far Matting in the year 705 of the New Era. Now, this is roughly 293 years before the start of the main storyline and around 273 years from her first appearance in New Spring. Now, not much is known of Cad Swain's youth before going to the White Tower, but she grew a powerful personality, whether that was due to the matriarchal society of Far Matting, where she's from, or it was just something innate to her, she did not tolerate those that she felt were weak, delicate, or foolish. Now, at the age of 15, knowing that she could channel, despite living in Far Matting, where the Guardians block her ability to touch the One Power, Cad Swain left for the White Tower to become a novice. Once she was in the Tower, Cad Swain was a novice for six years and spent another five years as an accepted. Now, given her strength in the One Power, it can be assumed that she had either personal pride issues or submission issues or whatever it would be that kept her from moving past the novice or accepted phase quicker, or perhaps they just had higher standards at that point. Either way, it's worth noting that she took longer to become an accepted and a full sister than Moraine, Swan, and Elida. Now, after being raised to full Aes Sedai, Cad Swain chose to join the Green Aja and was immediately at the top of the Aes Sedai hierarchy due to her vast strength in the One Power which we'll talk about later. Now, shortly after being raised to the Shaw, around the age of 26, Cad Swain came across what she describes as a toothless wilder named Norla in the Black Hills near their borderlands. Now, Cad Swain, knowing that she was the most powerful channeler in a thousand years to come through the White Tower, and knowing that she dominated the Aes Sedai hierarchy, thought she would just dominate this lady, whether through personality or one power or whatever it would be. But what ended up happening was something very different. Whatever pride that she had disappeared when, however this happened, she was completely humbled by Norla. Now, after being humbled by Norla, Cad Swain stayed and received a tutelage from her that Cad Swain credits for shaping her skills, her power, and her authority far beyond anything the White Tower taught her. Additionally, Norla possessed a set of hair ornaments that were actually a set of Terangrial and Angrial. Norla gave these items to Cad Swain, and that is the set of jewelry known as a paralysis net that Cad Swain would wear for the rest of her life. Now, in 758 of the New Age, at the age of 53 years old, Cad Swain kidnapped the sitting Amerlin seat, Miriam Copan. It was thought by most that Miriam was just on a self-imposed retreat, but she was actually kidnapped by Cad Swain. The Amerlin was considered a very weak Amerlin at the time, and Cad Swain had intentions of turning her into a strong Amerlin, so of course the natural thing to do is to kidnap her. So as part of the kidnapping, Cad Swain allegedly turned Miriam upside down using the One Power. However, Whatever it was worked, because when she returned, Cad Swain was never punished. In fact, Miriam said Cad Swain did not assault her. Cad Swain's reputation as somebody of strong authority and someone of great power was further fueled by her treatment of royals from various kingdoms over her career. At one point, Cad Swain again kidnapped a Terraboner king who could channel the One Power, brought him to the White Tower to be gentled, despite being chased by the Terraboner army, and nobody else knowing that he could channel but her. We'll talk about how she knew that later. She also kidnapped the king of Eridamon and the queen of Saldea when they were thinking about going to war with each other and forced them to mediate a war. Apparently, Cad Swain loves to kidnap people. She also spanked three reigning kings and four queens, so of course this is from a book written by Robert Jordan. Additionally, Cad Swain stopped a coup attempt in the White Tower. Now, Cirilla Bagand was the Amerlin seat from 866 of the New Age to 890 of the New Age. Now, during this time, the Amerlin and Cad Swain had a very hostile relationship. Both of them were known for being strong personalities, both of them being from far matting, and neither of them tolerated any foolishness from anybody else. Now, despite being very, very similar, 
They both expected deference from each other, and neither gave it, so they fueled hostilities. Two Aes Sedai approached Cad Swain for her support in overthrowing the Amarlin, believing because she was the Amarlin's enemy that she would take him up on it, and instead, Cad Swain captured them, took them directly to the Amarlin, and turned them in. The Green Aja attempted to raise Cad Swain to become a sitter in 846 of the New Age, and then also the head of the Green Aja in 862 of the New Age. She refused both times, not wanting to become tied down in the White Tower. Around 890 of the New Age, after the death of Cyrilla began, the Hall intended to raise Cad Swain to Amarlin, but then she disappeared for 10 years to avoid the summit. In 950 of the New Age, Cad Swain retired from world events and started to grow roses in Gildon. She stayed retired until right before the Aeol War, when she came out of retirement, and that's when she first enters the story. Cad Swain first appears in the story in the New Spring novel. Cad Swain is in the Kandori city of Kanloom when she meets Moraine, as well as Lorella Tarsi and Marianne Redhill. They are surprised to see Cad Swain alive, as many assume she was dead by now. Now, Cad Swain takes an interest in Moraine's search and why she is out and about without a warder, and Moraine interprets this at the time that she is suspecting Cad Swain of being Black Aja. The fact that Cad Swain then commands Marianne to stay with Moraine, and she turns out to be Black Aja, further cements the doubt in Moraine's mind. Roughly 20 years later, Cad Swain shows up again in Kyrian and attempts to insert herself as Rand's advisor, albeit she takes an abrasive path to get there. She believes that she must make him and the other Ashaman remember laughter and tears. So naturally, she insults Rand and admonishes him for his rude manners and language, but men had a viewing about Cad Swain that Rand would need her. So he decided to watch his tongue put up with her stuff, and basically he kept her around, despite not really wanting her around. Cad Swain does help Rand escape from Fane's attack outside of Kyrian when he got stabbed by the dagger. She helps him get back into Kyrian, and she takes her place by his side as his advisor, even though they have kind of a shaky alliance. During this time, she also makes a pact with Soralia, the wise one, to work together to achieve their ends, and they really develop a great amount of trust with each other. Rand travels to Far Matting to hunt the Ashaman who turned on him and attacked him and men, and Cad Swain follows. When Rand is captured by the Far Matting guards, Cad Swain helps release him by convincing the Far Matting ruling council that the Ashaman can actually channel inside the city, but they're actually using Nynaeve's well. Cad Swain then follows Rand and his group to Shadar Logoth, where she agrees to help defend Rand and Nynaeve while Rand cleanses Sidene. She takes command and sets everyone to their tasks. She uses her Terangrial to determine which direction channeling is coming from and points the others to attack. She personally creates a shield that surrounds Rand and Nynaeve to protect them from harm. After Sidene had been cleansed, Cad Swain takes the recovering Rand and Nynaeve to Algaron Pendalone's manor in Tyr. She had previously gentled his brother and maintained a good relationship with him despite this. So again, an oddity there. Here she advises Rand on his proposed alliance with the Shan Chan, initially not being for it, but later kind of comes around when Rand walks her through his thinking. Then the Trollocs attack the manor house, and she helps defend the Trollocs, and she shows that she's kind of a badass there. Later she accompanies Rand as he meets with the supposed Daughter of the Nine Moons. One of Cad Swain's Terangrial in her Paralis net disrupts a weave and reveals that Simarog is in disguise as the Daughter of the Nine Moons, and a fight breaks out with Rand losing his hand, but Simarog is captured. Cad Swain is set to the task of interrogating the Forsaken without torturing her. She eventually does break Simarog by spanking her and refusing to acknowledge her status as an evil Forsaken. However, Right after this event, Shidar Haran breaks Simarog free and gives her the domination band, the male Idom that was given to Cad Swain to guard. Simarog tortures Rand and men, and although Simarog is killed, Rand banishes Cad Swain for her failures on the pain of death if he sees her face again. Cad Swain, though, is not really set back here. She stays near Rand, although far enough away to not be seen directly by him. She starts feeling him slipping further and further away, becoming less and less human, so she makes a last-ditch effort with Nynaeve to try to bring Rand back to being a human. So she has Tam brought to the Stone of Tear to meet with Rand. Initially, that visit goes well, until Tam mentions that Cad Swain had brought him and Rand absolutely snaps and almost kills Tam before realizing what he's doing and traveling away on his journey of self-reflection, 
that ends up on Dragon Mount. Tam emerges from the room, yells at Cad Swain, says, what the hell did you do to him? And Cad Swain wraps him in flows of air and he calls her a bully, which she is. And then she eventually lets him go. Now, Rand returns from his epiphany on Dragon Mount, lifts Cad Swain's exile, and she accompanies him when he meets with the Borderlander armies. Now, she participates in the last battle. She helps defend the battlefront at Shea Ghoul and fight Grendel. When the last battle is over, Cad Swain notices that Moradin's body is up and about and riding away, and she knows that it is actually Rand, but she keeps her suspicions to herself to give him peace. She is approached after this as well, and she's asked to become the Omelette Seat, which is something that she accepts, we know, because what Brandon Sanderson said afterwards, although we don't see it on the page. So Cat Swain in the books is described as having very dark eyes and grayish hair that is done in a bun on the top of her head. Now she's always wearing hair ornaments that are hanging down around her, which we know to be the Paralysis Net, which we'll talk about in a minute. She's wearing that, however, at all times. Rather than being described as beautiful, she is described as being handsome. She is always well-dressed and in control of herself, and this no doubt comes through in her body language. She is five foot five inches tall. She describes herself as being stout rather than really skinny. But in terms of her clothing, she's never really described as being highly fashionable. She always wears nice, fairly plain clothing, and it's always described as such. Now, in an interview, Robert Jordan stated that Cad Swain is very practical. She does a lot of traveling, and she wants clothing that is comfortable and that it's easy to care for that she could hand over to even the worst maid and they could clean it. She is not interested in pressing others or attracting men. She believes all of that is foolishness. Now, in terms of her personality, Cat Swain is quite imposing. Because of her very long life and all of her accomplishments, she's viewed as a near legend by everybody that meets her. She's aware of this, and she uses it to her advantage. Cad Swain is very composed. She rarely lets anything surprise her, or at least appear to surprise her. She's very self-assured, and often believes that she knows the right things and must teach others how to see them the same way. She does not respect anybody that she believes to be acting the fool, and she has no qualms with pointing it out when you are a fool. She has used tactics that on the surface seem pretty wrong, i.e. kidnapping. However, she always demonstrates the attitude that the end seems to justify the means in most circumstances. So she ended up being right in those circumstances in those times where she kidnapped kings and queens, but nevertheless, she kidnapped people. She dislikes arrogance in other people. However, she exhibits arrogance quite often herself. She is very direct, more so than most Aes Sedai. She doesn't really pull punches when she says things. And despite coming across pretty rigid as a personality, she's actually really, really adaptable. She's not a slave to tradition. She's very, very adventurous, and she needs to challenge herself constantly. She knows that she is not infallible. In fact, she knows she's had a lot of mistakes. She just doesn't let everybody see them. She doesn't want to interrupt their vision of everybody believing she's a legend. So Cad Swain is one of the strongest female channelers of the One Power alive. Now, until the arrival of Egwene, Nynaeve, and Elaine, she was the strongest female channeler in the tower for more than a thousand years. The companion does have some discrepancies with the books in regards to Cad Swain's channeling ability, with Robert Jordan's notes putting her stronger than Egwene and Elaine, but the books say that they are stronger than her. Now, I tend to go with the books here because the notes, while they are important and they are cool and they are Robert Jordan's thinking, they could have been what he wrote down and then decided to put something different in the book, and that's something that Maria Simmons confirmed for me at WatCon this year. So I'm going to go with Elaine and Egwene are a little stronger than Cad Swain. Either way, Cad Swain is extremely powerful, just slightly below the Forsaken in power. In terms of talents, Cad Swain is average in her ability to heal, but she does have the ability to read residues, something that is very rare among Aes Sedai. She also has her Tarangriol, but we will talk about them in the next section. Cad Swain's most notable possession is one that has now come up multiple times, and that is, of course, her Paralysis Net, which is the collection of Terangriol and Angriol that greatly increase her power that hang from her hair. Now, included in this net, there are a number of items that she knows what they do, and there are a number of them that she doesn't know what they do. We're going to talk about the ones that we do know what they do. 
So first of all, there is a bird shape and it is an angriol. Now it's not a strong angriol, but it makes her as strong as the strongest possible man. So basically it makes her ran strength in the power. She also has a set of crescent moon terangriol that dissipate flows of the one power that are channeled at her, similar to Matt's foxhead medallion. They also warn her if somebody is channeling the power nearby. That's pretty darn cool. She had a figurine shaped like a hummingbird that was actually a well of the one power. So basically it could store a small amount of the one power and she could use it. She had an eight pointed star Terangriol that could detect the ability of a man that could channel. Now I could not detect that they were channeling, but that they had the ability to do so, which explains why Cad Swain was able to capture so many men who could channel, including the Terraboner King. She had a swallow figurine that could detect the use of Sidar and Sidine up to three miles away. The chain would turn in the direction of the channeling if she held it out in front of her. She also had a six point star Terangriol that when triggered would form an armor of sorts around her skin that would protect her from swords and knives and arrows and maces. Again, she's a badass with this stuff. She also had a fish with sharp fins. That was again, another figurine hanging from her hair that would enable her to pull someone else into an involuntary voluntary circle with her guiding the flows and that would only work if they were already using the one power though there are actually others on the chain she just doesn't know what they do on the whole the paralysis that makes cad swain really really powerful unaided and again without taviran luck she might have actually been able to take rand which is kind of nuts The most notable relationship that we get to see with Cad Swain is that of her and Rand. She has a contentious relationship with him, but then again, she deliberately made it so by challenging him over and over and admonishing him whenever she gets the chance. She did this to throw him off balance, but if it wasn't for Min's viewing, which she didn't know about at the time, Rand might have killed her or executed her, sent her away, but he believed he needed her because of men's viewing and so he tolerated her. Now she was approaching this as a mission the entire time and although indirectly she was actually successful in helping him remember laughter and tears and bring him back to his humanity. The begrudging respect that she gains for him once he's kind of hit Zen Ran level is one of my favorite moments in the series and I think it's funny when she calls him boy once. He comments that he thinks it's kind of funny she says that because he is centuries older than her. I love that she doesn't call him boy again. Another close relationship for Cad Swain is with Sora Liam. Now it appears that she is the only person in the story with whom Cad Swain feels is unequal. They don't have the exact same goals, but they trust each other and they're not fools and they believe the other to be formidable. They get the same type of reactions from other people as well. So I really enjoy that relationship and that dynamic. My favorite Cad Swain moment is the cleansing of Sidine. I find it extremely enjoyable, and I really think it's cool when she takes charge when Ran and Nynaeve are settling down to start cleansing the, the source. She creates a battle plan, and they successfully execute it with her little group of channelers. They fend off the Forsaken, they kill some of them, and watching her take the lead and leading that defense is really fun for me. So after the end of the story, we know that Cad Swain becomes the new Amarlin seat with what is left of the Aes Sedai. She didn't want to do that role, but she's probably the best person to do it. It will remain to be seen if she continues many of Egwene's reforms, but given that she has a relationship with the Aiel and the Sea Folk already, she would likely see sense in the alliances that Egwene made, and also she would probably continue on with the retirement aspect with the kin. I don't see her thinking the idea of limiting their lifespans is logical over the three oaths. I could actually see her establishing order in the White Tower, getting things up and running again, and then retiring herself without the three oaths. Because without the three oaths, yes, she's 300 years old roughly at the end of the story, but without them, her level of strength, she should be expected to live near 600, 700 years. So she's not even halfway through her lifespan, but she will die soon if she stays with the Oaths. I also do not believe that she would ever give up that she knows what happened to Rand. I believe that she probably respects him enough to keep that secret. Just my thoughts. So Cad Swain is reviled by many people due to her arrogant attitude, but in my opinion, much of the hate she receives is because she just isn't Maureen. 
We lost Moraine in the previous book to her appearance, and then her entrance is different, and her approach to advising Rand is different. That being said, I think she succeeded with something that Moraine did not, and Cad Swain is arguably more effective at being Rand's advisor. Moraine and Cad Swain share the fact that they're both calculating, intelligent, and they're willing to go against tradition and norms to achieve their ends. But Cad Swain has the benefit of wisdom and the ability to get pretty much everybody to do as she believes they need to. She's basically Moraine, but with even more influence and more power. Moraine knew Rand personally, and I think that does make her somewhat more effective, and she did understand Rand better than Cad Swain. But overall, I love Cad Swain as a character, and I think that she's a vital part to the story. She gives a different take on the advisor, and it's a completely different type of Aes Sedai than any other one we see. She's supremely practical, but not lacking any of the arrogance of normal Aes Sedai. She's basically what I think Nynaeve will grow up into. So, what did you think of Cad Swain? Let me know in the comments of the video. Do you think Moraine was a better advisor or Cad Swain? Please also make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more Wheel of Time TV and book content. I have more than 300 videos up on this channel, all of them about the Wheel of Time. Thank you to my patrons for your support. If you enjoy this content and you want to support the channel, head to my Patreon link in the description of this video. You guys make this possible. Huge thank you to those that are already supporting me now. Also, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out these videos here that you also might like. Thanks for watching and until next time, peace out.